It ain't no way you could be a day one A1 Gucci man fan and not know. I got so many records with this Hell man. Yeah. And even like aside from the record, just like the history. For sure. Wherever that man was, I was. Like yeah, we facts. was on the road together. Facts. Like we wasn't in the mainstream media like that because at the time he went mainstream. Right. And he was underground. Girl, Matt Breeze, aka the Candy Lady, baby. And you already know I'm rocking with the Progress Report. You did? The Progress Report. All right, what's going on? It's your girl, Lala Shepard. This is Conversations with Lala, presented by the Progress Report. And I am super, super honored today. I am sitting here with Miss Mac Breezy. Clearly. Hey. With the business. You dig? Hey, man, let me just give you a little background information. You know, we was talking in the hallway a little bit, but, you know, I'm from Ohio. Um, so, shit, I was probably, I know I just started driving around this time, but my favorite song by you is um, I Got It with Montana the Mac. And then oh, also, wow. too, okay. they crunk me up with Crime Out. Those was my two favorite records from you. And I okay. would play them joints out. Like, I would make CDs for all my friends back then. So just to let you know just how your music would travel, like like right. I said, this was LimeWire days. Right. So this was, you know, it's like dope. 2004, 2008. Yep, yep, yeah. yep, yep. Yeah, so the 2008 was the Montana. I got Mac. it, yeah. I got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then, let's see. Me up. That was, that was my first mixtape, yeah. making all the cash. Yeah. Hosted by DJ Screen. Both shout the out to Screen. Yeah, both of the mixtapes was ho uh, hosted by DJ Screen. So mm. shout out DJ Screen for hosting my first two mixtapes. That's hard. Making all the cash. Yes, and, sir. Uh, the candy lady. Yep, oh, yep, yeah. yep. So I just wanted to give you that background to let you okay. know how long I've been listening to you. Day one since you day did. one. Okay. For real. So I just wanted to put that out there. You know, the progress support, we like to, you know, pay homage to those that pay it for it for us. Because if it wasn't for people like you and, you know, salute to Scream, that's actually one of my mentors. Clearly. Um, I wouldn't be here today. You know yeah, what I mean? Scream so, put a lot of us on. A so lot. shout out to DJ Scream. Absolutely. Good rich. For real. Easy all day. You dig. So let's yeah. start from the very beginning. You know what I mean? I know where you're from, but, you know, educate the people. Let them know where you're from exactly. Okay, so my name is Mac Breezy, the candy lady. Okay. Baby. And for those of y'all who don't know, I am a ATL native. I was born and raised in Atlanta, Georgia. Yep. I am from McCannisville. I was born in Grady Memorial Hospital, one of the the biggest hospitals you know what I'm saying? Yep. so yeah uh i'm like real a town like yeah. <laughs> atlanta homegrown georgia peach For hey, sure. i know a lot of people are migrated here yep. you know like they say if like you me. flew here i grew here For sure. and that's factual no nah, for sure respect respect um in atlanta man it's just it's produced so many great moments so many great people yeah. um you know so talk about just Growing up in Atlanta, like, you know, I think for people that grew up here, music was so normal for y'all. Like, for us in Ohio, it wasn't normal. You know what I'm saying? If people was doing music, it was like, damn, you do music? How do you even go about recording? But I feel like for people in Atlanta, that was second nature. See, we from the home of Ludacris and Of course. Dupree, a lot of, a lot, you know, Lil John. Like, Lil John. Yeah. So it's been around. Like, right. I grew Facts. up. It's always, we, I, you know, first of all, we from, this from the home of Freaknik. Oh, so, facts. you know, the music is heavy. Like, when I was facts. growing up, like, I was hitting the club when I was 11, 12 years old. Like, they had teenage clubs. That's I don't crazy. know if they had that, like, a lot of where y'all from. Yeah. But we had teenage clubs yeah. for teenagers. And then we had, you know, the grown folk clubs. So music, the music scene has always been, like, mm. from the 69 boys. Like, you mm. know, like, we, people... It just you know outcasts and everybody. It's just it's Kilo. always been the a. We have some talented Absolutely. people from out of Atlanta, and I've been you can run and see these people like a lot. Of, what, what I like about um a lot of people from Atlanta like they really give back to their community. Absolutely, like a lot of people once they make it, you don't see them no True. more. But you still see uh, people from Atlanta. These artists reaching they, back in, they reaching back into the community and giving yep. back to the community. And and they throw a lot of events Absolutely. here. You know, locally you see them around. So I love the fact that they haven't forgotten where they came. From, Absolutely, you know. 
Absolutely. Um, talk about coming up in the crunk era, because that's honestly, Ooh. that's still one of my favorite yeah, that eras, yeah. though, for yeah, real. Yeah, that crunk me up. Hey. Yeah, that crunk me up. Hey. Yeah, that crunk me up. Yeah, that crunk me up. Well, uh, oh. Okay, I had a little moment. Nah, hey, <laughs> that was my shit. Uh, yeah, so, ooh, okay. I don't know about nobody else, but for me, I love the yes. crunk era. Yes, yes. Like, <laughs> um, I first started rapping. To when I started hearing Lil Jon and the Eastside yeah. Boys, it's some in his house. It's some. In I remember his the house. videos. If you see him, yeah. all that, and um, even like um, what's his name? Oh, what's his name? Uh, shoot, bi bi bi. Come on, I'm drawing sure. a blank, but y'all know for who sure. I'm talking about. Like um, so yeah, like I can't believe I'm forgetting this man's name, but. You know, like the crunk era, it was just so epic. Like nostalgic, bro. It just it was a whole movement. Yeah. Like it wasn't nothing like hearing that song go off in the club and everybody is Man. throwing bowls literally from wall to wall. And Crazy. It was, it was a fun type of crunk. Like everything right. wasn't just Oh, we trying to fight each other. Yeah. We was always having fun. Right. Like, throwing bowls was when, like, literally hitting nobody. <laughs> nah, but, for sure. You know, we, we stumping, yeah, we throwing yeah, bowls. All that it, was shit. A, it was a fun time. It wasn't a lot of violence going on. Now, right. But don't get me wrong, when the Nook If You Book come on, you know. It's, Niggas going crazy. You already know. Yeah. It's a fight found, uh, bound to uh, break out, but right. it was just so fun. It was just so lively. Like, mm. everybody, that's the, I came out, like, back when people was dancing in the club. Not just standing Sweating on when you leave. couch, holding up a while, popping bottles. Like, yeah. no, people was on the dance floor dancing. Like, they talking about twerking now. But you see that online, but you don't yeah. see nobody doing that in the club. Like, we used to have fun. Like, Facts. everybody was dancing, dance with your friend, dancing on somebody. Like, yeah. it was actually bumping and grinding going <laughs> yeah. on. Like, for real. Like, yeah. everybody, I forget all that, like, holding up the wall. You'll catch somebody in the corner, like, <laughs> really going half right. on the baby. Like, yeah. that's the that's the vibe. That, that energy. That energy. Yeah. It was everything. I don't mm. know. Like, now it's just. Yeah, so much camping going on. Now, nah, in fact, we gonna I'm gonna ask your opinion about the current state of music too. We oh, gonna get Lord. to that. We gonna get to that. But you know, I I, I do want to you know just keep you know take it back to then because that okay. was like I said, that's still my favorite era. Like I listened to a lot you of little John just shit. Back so many hey, memes, like you don't even. Understand. I can only imagine though, like being in it. You know what I mean? Like I said, I'm I'm living through it in a, in a secondary type view, being in a different place. Right. But it being in Atlanta, imagine I know that, that energy crazy. like when you on stage and. Everybody I mean, just like, that's what I'm saying. Just, just got that camera out looking at yeah. you, like recording you, but just actually enjoying just, the moment. Right. To the moment and just vibing and like literally mosh pit. Like I'm talking Crazy. about. I miss those days. I bet. I really do. Hell yeah. yeah. Um. So who were some of your influences looking up, like, or coming up? I'm sorry. Who did you look up to or who did you listen to? Because I know you got started in music early. Yeah, I mean, see, I pretty much listened to, I was always watching the uh, 106 in Park. Absolutely. All that kind of stuff, the ba Rap City, Rap the City, Basement, yeah. all that. So I didn't just listen to music where I'm from. I listened right, to all kinds right. of music. So, uh, like, even, like, growing up, me, I, I really was into, like, the gospel okay and the r b got like you. still to this day yeah the 90 percent of the music that i listen to is r b and gospel got you i don't know how i became a rapper got you okay like rapping is just a gift like yeah. it, it it's like i used to just um journal mm. Mm -hmm. i just used to because it started from school Mm -hmm. They used to make us do journals in school. Yep, I they'll remember give that us a topic, mm -hmm. and they'll make us do journals in school. Yeah, and then um, I would take that, I would do that every day, mm. and just whatever I went through throughout in school or during my day, or my mama pissed me off or put me on punishment. <laughs> yeah, I wrote it down. Yeah, <laughs> I wrote it down in my journal, and my mama she'll go back and read my journals. She'll scratch out the piss words. <laughs> okay. And she'll like, you need to take some of that energy and, mm. you know, like put it in a song or put it in a poem. Or so something. your mama told you to do that? Yeah, she was like, Damn. you know, take those words and, and you know, make use out of them. That's so hard. I started, you know, formulating in like a poem format. But gotcha. then 
over time listening see we had those cassette tapes yep and then it had a song but then you had an instrumental yep so i popped mm-hmm. the little cassette tape in little john come on you know crazy and then i would just ride the beat and i just just rap i i didn't know really how to formulate a song i yeah. was just rapping and rapping and rapping and rapping and it just kept going yeah then until one day i started sharing some of my little rhymes with uh my homeboy archie i don't know if okay. you remember archie we ready oh, for sure we ready yeah so he was real popping back then and he lived in my neighborhood so gotcha. he is the one who really showed me how to uh this is how this is how you count bars this is a 16 this is the eight this Mm. is the hook this is a bridge like he broke it down and showed me how to formulate a song and i so ever since i was like okay i got this so then i just started mimicking what i was if i hear missy elliott's song if i hear you know everybody had their groups back in the day i was beyonce okay you we all had yeah want to mimic the groups right tlc and all that facts and i listen to these songs and I make like my own version with my own words mm. and just take the instrumentals. That's how I really got, you know, started growing got up. You. And then I started doing talent shows. Okay. And but before I started doing talent shows, it was the thing, like we had a lot of free time on our hand in school. Yeah. So the main times that I could showcase what I wrote mm-hmm. at home was lunchtime and PE. Yep. So lunchtime, everybody had a lunch. We all get, we all get on the. You already yeah, know. I already know. Everybody it. get that little pen and sure. uh, the little pen and they, uh, For sure. uh, and, and everybody started making the beat, and I just yep. come in with my rap. Yeah. And everybody like, ooh, that was hard. Yeah. Then they'll go around the school like, hey, let her hear that song you had, mm. and they started requesting it, and I so I just started making more. Same thing with uh, in the bleachers. Got we you. used to get down and have Hell a little yeah. freestyle, a little cypher. Yep. And I was the only girl rapping back then. Okay. Okay. You know, that was in middle school. Then when I got into high school, I found other other girls and other, mm. you know, peers that rapped. And it was like, that was that was my thing, you yeah. know. And then I just started doing talent shows. And it just kind of took off because I got discovered mm. at uh, Columbia High School talent got you. show. Okay. I, I, I did my first big one at Reading High School. Got you. Then I did the Columbia High School. And that's East when side. I. Right. That's when I had got discovered. Okay. Um, they did an annual. Um, talent show every year. Okay, and Greg Street he hosted Shout it. Out to Greg and Street. they, I think they had like the grand prize was like the winner get a single deal with So So Do. Oh, word. And okay. At the time, I was rapping with this other girl named Sianica. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was Matt CC. I was Matt Breezy. She was yeah. Matt CC. And we was like a little duo, but she kind of got stage fright mm-hmm. and she bailed. So mm. I had to do the whole thing by Shit. myself. But it just motivated me, and I rock, I rocked that high school like yeah, I, it went crazy. And I think had I was prepared from the jump, I yeah. like, may have won. But you know the way everything played out, I, I was runner up for sure. I was runner up to Young Capone. He goes hey. by I think Raw now or Dope Boy Raw. Dope Boy Raw. I like Young yeah, Capone. So for I was sure. runner up to him, and that was <laughs> okay. my homeboy back in the day. So I went hurt because one of us, <laughs> right, you know, right. one of us won. So it's it cool because that was my family or whatever. Yeah, and then I think that's how he got his deal with So So Dope. But that it makes wasn't sense. A, a total loss because I got discovered, and I was introduced to one of the big. Um, uh, Booking agents, okay, or whatever, uh, named Johnny Cabell. And oh, yeah, so he was like, You talented, I want to work with you, I want to manage you. Mm. And then he just put me in the studio and mm. I recorded my demo, and it happened so fast because the very first, I think I, I recorded two songs, mm. and those songs that I recorded, the studio I recorded in D Money, he heard it and said, I want to sign that girl, sign that girl to my label, Shit. and so. I was like 15 years old and had a record deal. And from there, I had vinyls. My song was in rotation, all the southern markets. I was wow. doing shows everywhere. And I want to shout out to Columbus, Georgia, because. Okay, shout out that, to Columbus. I, Columbus, Georgia, I love that city so much Word. because that's like my biggest fan base. They show me so much love. When yeah. I go there, like I feel like I'm Lil' Kim. Like, yeah. That's how they that's treat hard. me. That's, that's how hard. they treat me. So big shout out. To Columbus, Georgia. I love mm. y'all. And if I'm not mistaken, I think they told me got some family out there or something. Okay. I, I believe. Salute I'm not Zaytoven. sure. Yeah. 
But yeah, most definitely. So that's just how I got that's my hard. start, okay. you know. And it just really took off from there, just yeah, yeah, yeah. going on the road. Because me and Crime, I had the same manager as Crime Up. Love Diamond. And like I said, he was um, the biggest booking agent got in the you. South. So I was on opening up for a lot that's of big crazy. acts. That's crazy. So it was a good. It was a good era. It was a good Man, run. And I then tell you, I roll out my first mixtape with DJ Scream. Alley you. <laughs> That's hard. We need to do some research because if I'm not mistaken, I'm the first female that okay. DJ Scream had a mixtape. Got with. you. Got I'm you. like, I'm like, that's serious. We need to okay. research that for sure. Because my mixtape came out like 2004. Got you. So. I don't think he had an uh like not a solo. That, mix. I was gonna say not that early he did. I don't N- think like so. Like because Diamond, oh Diamond did. No, nah, that was like after later. me. Yeah, I, yeah, I remember that, that, that because she didn't have a solo right, career. Exactly. She came out as a group. Exactly. So when she came out with hers, I had already right. had about two by the time she had that, came out. That might be so. Because they were still a group for a long right. time. Yeah, so I don't We're going to send this to you know scream we going to confirm. Gonna, yeah, let's go through your archive yeah. and let's see. Because uh, I think Matt Breezy was the first female Ooh. rapper that had a, a solo Matt Breezy scream. making all the cash DJ Scream Shit. exclusive. That's hard. Yeah. And, and like I said, you know, salute to Scream. He's definitely one person who I reaches back scream. and gives everybody opportunity as long as you're willing to work hard. So salute to him. Yes, yes, yes. So talk about putting in the footwork. You know, just during that time, like, you know, like at this point, like you got all these good things happening to you. But talk about putting in the footwork, because I feel like a lot of people forget about that side of it. Like, it's it's a lot of work being an artist. And you was young. Yeah, I ain't did nothing but footwork. Like, nothing okay. was handed to me. Nothing was given to me. I work.